Hey everybody, Connor here today at eTrailer.com. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt Custom Base Plate Kit here for our 2020 Jeep Wrangler. So here we have the base plates installed on our Jeep. There are actually a few other things you may need to flat tow the vehicle. A few of these things are, number one, a supplemental braking system. This is required in most states. It's not an actual requirement to flat tow, but many states do have a stipulation based on the weight of the towed vehicle. Some other things you'll need is a tow bar, which we already talked about, some safety cables, as well as a lighting system to power the lights on the vehicle to let others know behind you what your signals are. So this is what our base plate kit is gonna look like installed on our Jeep. As you can see here, we have safety chain tabs on the outside of our cross tube here, which connects our two arms. Now what I really like about this base plate kit here is it has a nice shiny powder coated black finish. This really helps it blend in with our vehicle. And unless you really got down here, you wouldn't really notice the base plate kit installed. It does look rather factory. And in addition to the aesthetics, the powder coat here is gonna help it hold up from rust and corrosion. So we don't get any issues with that over time. So as we mentioned earlier, here is the tab the hole here is where our safety chain loop and hooks are gonna go. It's gonna secure them on the outside here. They're not gonna get in the way of anything else on our base plate kit here or any of the other components we may do, need to install to flat to our Jeep. And if we bring our attention to the arms here, as you can see, the arms here actually have a nice removable design. And basically what that means is when we're not ready to tow and we're just driving around town after we've got to our destination, we're simply gonna pull that plunger there on this pin, then we can rotate it outward. And then we have these nice little dust caps with come, that come with our kit here, so we can make sure that we don't get any water or dirt into our base plate. As you can see here, this gives it a very nice, clean, finished install look, which is how we would be rolling around town when we're not towing. But when we are ready to hook back up to our motor home, hit the road again, it's actually super, super easy to install these tabs here. You simply insert them, rotate them, then we can press it forward to depress the plunger. You can actually turn it either way to lock it in place. And there we go. Now we're ready to hook up our tow bar and hit the road. So another great thing about this Kurt Custom Fit Base Plate Kit is that it'll work with either Blue Ox or Kurt tow bars. Therefore, we have a wide range of selection to choose from depending on what needs I personally really like the Blue Ox tow bars. We have a great selection of these here at eTrailer. So if you don't already have one, I definitely recommend you check these out. So most Blue Ox tow bars are gonna have a three lug design that'll simply go on the outside of our pins here, as well as one through the center. And then we just simply insert our pin there, and that's it. It's a pretty basic, simple, easy hookup. So in regards to installation, I've done quite a few of these different base plate kits here. And I will say the Jeep is definitely the easiest vehicle to do these on. We do have to drill a couple holes, which is pretty minor overall. But other than that, it really just fits right up into position. It's pretty easy to install and it really doesn't take that long. You really shouldn't need any specialized tools and you don't need a whole lot of mechanical know-how to be able to know how to do this. So let's go ahead and jump right into that installation and show you guys how it's done. So the first step of our installation here we want to come underneath to the skid shield here on our front bumper. We're going to have two bolts here on the outside. We're going to need to take out using an eight millimeter socket. So now if we come up to where the skid shield meets the front bumper fascia here, on the bottom side, we're going to see these push pin fasteners. There's gonna be eight of them. We need to go ahead and take each of these out so we can remove this panel here. In order to remove them, well, keep in mind there is gonna be one on the each side here sort of hidden behind there. But in order to remove these, we're gonna be using a trim panel removal tool. If you have a flathead screwdriver, that'll work as well. We're just gonna get it up in there so we can wedge the center out. Because once we remove the center section, the rest of it should come out just like that. So now we'll go, we'll go ahead and repeat this process on our remaining fasteners. With our final push fastener removed, we should be able to remove the skid shield like so. So now we have a metal shield here that's held in place with the two bolts here, one on either side, 
We're gonna take a 16 millimeter socket. We're gonna go ahead and remove those now so we can remove this metal shield. We can go ahead and set this aside. So now we need to come to the top of our bumper here, directly in front of our grill. And if we look down, we're gonna see we have two push pin fasteners here, one on either side. We need to go ahead and remove those. I'm gonna take a trim panel tool there and try to get the center of the fastener pushed up. Then we should be able to remove the rest of it. So now we're gonna come over to the passenger side here. If we identify where our fog light is, and we look directly behind that under the bumper, we should see this gray connector here. We're gonna go ahead and pry it off from the frame. Just like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna disconnect it here. We're gonna see a tab we needed to press there in the center. Once we press that hard enough, we should be able to separate these two pieces here. Just like that. So now we're gonna take an 18 millimeter socket. And we're gonna have eight nuts in total, four on each side, holding the front bumper fascia to the vehicle's frame here. So here's what these nuts look like. We're gonna have two on the inside and two on the outside for a total of four on each side. So let's go ahead and get those out now. We're gonna be using a breaker bar to free them as they are torqued down pretty tight. Once we've broken them all free, we can come back with our impact and zip them the rest of the way out. So now with our final bolt removed, we're gonna come here to the top. We're gonna to grab both of these hooks here we should be able to pull the bumper out straight and away from the vehicle. So now we're going to come to the outside of either frame here. We're going to see this bracket here, which attaches to our bumper beam. There's going to be a bolt here we're going to remove with a 16 millimeter socket. We're going to need to do this on both sides. So now that we have the bumper off, we're gonna turn our attention to our bumper mounting brackets, which we see here, directly attached to the frame. What we need to do is, we're gonna take a look at this bottom oblong hole here in the center. We're gonna be using this hole to install our base plates. So we need to get the head of our carriage bolt through that hole, as well as our spacer block. So we're gonna to need to enlarge this hole here on both sides of the vehicle. In order to enlarge it, you have a couple different options. Uh, if you have a step drill bit, that'll work for this, or a regular drill bit you can use to sort of wall it out there. However, we're gonna be using a burr bit, which you may not have at home, but it's a little bit more of a specialized tool. We're gonna go ahead and use that now to go ahead and open up this hole. Then we'll repeatedly test fit our hardware here to see when we have enough. So we've got our hole enlarged here. Let's go ahead and check the fitment of our spacer block and then our carriage bolt. Now that we know we can get both of those in there, the last thing I'm gonna do is before I repeat this process on the other side, I'm gonna take a paint marker here. I'm just gonna coat that bare metal so we don't have to worry about any rust issues down the line. So for this next part here, we've already got both of our holes enlarged to the proper size. We can actually go ahead and set the base plate on the frame of the vehicle. Before we do so, we're gonna take our M10 hex bolts here, along with our 3 8 inch diameter conical tooth washers. We're gonna be using these to secure the base plate for our first step. They're actually gonna go in the holes that we removed the bracket from earlier, which are those right there. So let's go ahead and set the base plate on the position now and secure it using these holes here on the side. So now with an extra set of hands, we'll go ahead and lift the base plate up into position and secure it here with our bolt. 
So before we start drilling, attaching and securing our base plate to the frame on our vehicle, we need to get a level here and make sure it's as level as possible. That way when we drill our holes, everything lines up and it's sitting nice and straight. So we're actually gonna take a bubble level here to make sure it's pretty dead on now. But if we did need to make some minor adjustments, we could just loosen those bolts and move our cross tube up or down slightly. So we're gonna be drilling out our top rearward hole here and our base plate into the frame. We're using the base plate as a template. So the final size the hole needs to be is gonna be in half inch. So right now we're gonna take a half inch drill bit. We're just gonna get our hole started. The tip of this drill bit will sort of make like a pilot hole for us. And then we can come back with a smaller drill bit and work our way up to the final size. Now keep in mind, we aren't gonna be going all the way through the frame there. So you want to be careful when we do push our drill through. So you can see there we have a pretty good pilot hole drilled. Now we're going to start with a smaller drill bit, drill it all the way through, and then work our way up. So here's what our hole is going to look like when we have it drilled to the final size here. Once that's done, we're going to take a paint marker here, and we're going to try to coat the inside of that metal as best we can so we don't have to worry about any rust or corrosion issues. So now that we have our holes drilled out, we need to go ahead and grab one of the spacer blocks that come in our kit here. And then we're gonna go ahead and loosen this bolt, which we tightened earlier. We wanna loosen it enough so we can get our spacer block there between the base plate and the frame. And then we wanna slide it over into position to line everything up. Once we get it in the correct position, we're gonna go ahead and take one of our carriage bolts here and just try to stick it through the spacer block and the hole in our frame to ensure everything's aligned properly. Once so, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down this bolt. We'll go ahead and repeat this process on the other side. So now that we have our spacer block into position, we can go ahead and begin inserting our hardware. We're gonna be grabbing the longer two and a quarter inch carriage bolt that comes in our kit here, along with a spacer block and a flange nut, and then our fish wire. What we need to do is we need to take the coiled end of our fish wire, feed it through that hole there, and get it to come out this larger hole that we drilled out earlier. So let's go ahead and do that now. In order to get the fish wire to go the way we want, I think if we put a slight bend in the line there, it'll help us maneuver inside of that frame rail. So if we take a look in the access hole there, we can just barely see that fish wire. I'm gonna reach in here with some needle nose pliers and grab it, pull it the rest of the way out. Now we're gonna go ahead and stick on our spacer block followed up with our carriage bolt. We'll shove both of those back into the frame and try to pull it out our hole there. So now we can take our pull wire off here. We're gonna pin it against the side of the frame there so we don't push it back in. Then we can go ahead and start our flange nut. Go ahead and repeat this process on the other side. So I know the instructions don't say anything about the use of Loctite, but pretty much every base plate kit we've installed here at eTrailer, we've been using this red Loctite. So we're gonna go ahead and recommend it to you guys as well. We're just gonna put a few drops here on this bolt before we torque the nut down. We're gonna do that for all of the remaining fasteners during this install. Now we're gonna torque our two outside bolts here to the specifications in our manual. We're gonna be using a 19 millimeter deep well socket for this. Now that we have the two bolts on the side torch, we can go ahead and remove these. We're gonna have another one on the other side as well. So now once we have our bolt removed here, we're gonna take our factory bumper bracket here. We're gonna come underneath here and we're gonna slide it up into position and align it with the two holes in the front there. 
Then we can re-secure it using our bolt that we just removed earlier. But before we do so, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of Loctite. Now we'll go ahead and screw this in and then torque it down to the specifications in our instructions. We do wanna make sure while we're tightening it that we are lined up here in the front. So now we want to come to the lowermost hole here on our base plate kit here. As you can see there, our hole is already almost lining up with a factory hole in the frame, but not quite. So we need to come back here with a half inch drill bit and drill this out. We're going to do this on both sides. Now we'll go ahead and test fit our bolt. So once we know that it's cleared, we can go ahead and spray paint this hole to clean up any raw metal. We'll go ahead and repeat this process on the other side. So now we're going to take a piece of our fish wire here. We're going to be installing it in this lowermost hole here that we just drilled out. We're going to take the coiled end, slip it through there, and we should just be able to angle it straight down. There's a little bit of a lip there, so we may need to adjust slightly, but once we get it through there, we're going to come back with our spacer block and then our carriage bolt and thread that on. Then we can push it back up into the frame and pull it through. Go ahead and remove our fish wire here. And don't forget before we put our nut on here, just going to take some Loctite apply it to the threads. It's probably a little bit more than you need there, but just a little bit should be fine. Now we'll go ahead and repeat that process on the other side and then torque them both down. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our little loops here and our safety cables that come with our kit. We need to secure around the frame of the vehicle and around our base plate. We're going to have one on each side. This bottom hole here is actually what we're going to use to secure the cable to our base plate. So now we just need to find a spot on the frame that's going to be free of any moving components. Um, if we come around the back side here, we're going to have a little pocket. We should be able to poke it out here. Then we're going to bring that around and then attach it down here with our loop. Now we can go ahead and tighten up our nut here. We'll come back with a set of channel locks here. We'll just snug that down. But as you can see here in this location, we're not going to interfere with any of the moving components, such as the sway bar or a rack and pinion here. And we're nice and secure. We're not going to be in the way of any of our fasteners. So that should be perfect. We'll go ahead and repeat that process on the other side. So now with our safety cables secure, we can go ahead and reinstall our factory bumper here. Now that we have our bumper secure on the bumper beam, we can go ahead and reinstall it using our factory hardware in the reverse order that we removed it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reinstall our metal shield here, just held in place with the factory bolts, one on each side. So we've already done that, but it's super easy just to sit in place. There's going to be a tab at the top we need to line up here, and we may need to push our safety cables back to make for clearance. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our bottom splash shield here. You can see we've already had it marked. We went ahead and tried to test fit it on the fascia there and sort of got the general idea of where we need to trim, along with using our instructions for that as well. So now we're going to go ahead and cut both of these slots out. You have a few different options here. You can use a Dremel tool. Chances are you probably don't have one of these. Uh, a set of tin snips would work perfectly for this as well. But let's go ahead and make our cuts. And 
now that we have our cut made, we're just going to go ahead and clean up our rough edges here. If we have a file or if we use a Dremel, we should just be able to knock these off by hand. We'll go ahead and repeat this process on the other side here and then test fit it on the fascia. And once we've ensured it's going to clear, we'll go ahead and secure it using our factory hardware. Keep in mind, we are going to have two extra fasteners since we did cut out one of the attachment points on each side here to clear our base plate. And last but not least, we're going to have a couple 8mm screws here. And that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt Custom Base Plate Kit here for our 2020 Jeep Wrangler.